terrified at the prospect that I might ever have to rely on 911 in a life and death situation. D.C. resident Kathleen Burke terrified that she would have to rely on 911 in a life and death situation, which, by the way, I thought exactly that's what 911 is for, is to help us out in a life and death situation. Well, for Kathleen Burke, it was very scary for her over the weekend, as reported by NBC4. She called 911 when there was an intruder in her home, and she was placed on hold. She wasn't able to get to a dispatcher. NBC4 did some uh, further investigation. Apparently, 15 calls on Saturday were abandoned. Uh, when they called into 911, we are very pleased and uh, and happy to have public information officer for the Office of United Unified Communications, excuse me, Wanda Gaddison. Uh, this is the agency that uh, that handles emergency 911s in the district. Uh, Ms. Gaddison, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. You, you can imagine that this story, and I'm sure that it has uh, been uh, something of, of utmost importance for you. Uh, our listeners, whenever we talk about it, yesterday and earlier this morning, they get really fired up about this, and they are very concerned about uh, how D.C. is handling some of the fundamentals that a city needs to do, like handling 911 calls. How can you respond to this? Understood. Understood. Uh, hey, we're, we take it very seriously, too. Um, I think this is an opportunity for education. I'm, I'm sure it's very uh, scary to get a whole message when you call 911, but honestly, it's an industry standard that a uh, practice, it's practiced all over across the country. It, this has been around forever, probably since the late 80s, the early 90s. It doesn't happen often, but we definitely understand the concern. Well, why did it happen? Well, what happened uh, at the time this complainant called, it just happened to be a lot of calls that came in in a very short window of time. In other words, a spike in call volume right at the time that she called, a perfect storm, if you will. We were properly staffed. We, we staffed based on her historical data. We always have. It just so happened that when her call came in, there had been several other calls to come in at the very same time. Um, our call takers were handling other calls. At the time, there were sounds of gunshots in the 7th District. Um, there was a burglar alarm call, several medical calls, a theft and uh, an assault. So when she, called, when she called in, the call takers were handling other uh, well, calls. I, okay. I, I can get that, but you know, if one fell through the cracks, you could say, well, okay, it's just one of those unusual events. But we now have information that some 15 calls over the course of Saturday went unanswered. That seems a little high. Not really. We, we, we get abandoned calls every day. I know to hear that, it may sound shocking. But we get, a, we, we get abandoned calls all the time. Well, what That's does that not, tell you? It's not anything unusual. You have to realize now that with wireless technology and how so many people are using cell phones, you don't know if they're pocket dials. That that can mean a lot of things. Um, it doesn't mean that our call takers were not there to answer the calls. It could mean any number of things. The way we um, we ascertain that data, we call it a, an abandoned call. But all that means is a call that reached the queue, the wait queue, but it was never addressed by a call taker. Wanda get us any a, number of things. Want to get it us happens into, every day. All right. Want to get us into our guest. She's a public information officer for the Office of Unified Communications. They handle 911 calls here in the district. And uh, I want to ask you this because, uh, you know, we've had stories about emergency responders, first responders, and they haven't been able to get an ambulance on the scene. And so they end up uh, here in the district. They end up getting an ambulance from Prince George's County or maybe from uh, Arlington or something. Uh, there's spillover. You know, there's a contingency plan. So my question is, if 911 calls are getting jammed, uh, shouldn't there be some kind of contingency where those calls can roll over to maybe a, a neighboring district? I know in private industry, let's say you want to call Ticketmaster to get tickets for a concert and all the lines are busy. You know what? They'll roll those calls over to, you know, the next city uh, where there is a call center. This technology exists. Don't you think it's important to be able to get someone on the phone the second you call 911? No, I think you. I think you would have faster and more efficient ser service if you would stay with us. We handle dispatching for the Metropolitan Police Department and DC Fire. Um, the plane's call was on hold for about a minute. In that time, the time that it would have taken her to roll over to PG County for her to get assistance for them to have to call. Uh, it w you know, we don't. They don't handle our first responders. They don't dispatch these yeah. field units. That would have absolutely taken longer time. She did the right thing by calling and, and hanging in there for the minute. Your call stays in queue, and it's going to be answered in the order that it was received. Well, I, I get all that, but you can understand how someone 
who has an intruder in their house would be pretty upset that while she was fighting off an intruder, she couldn't get even somebody to pick up the phone for a, for a police officer to be sent to the location. I mean, that's imagine that you were in that situation. How no, would you I, feel? I, under, I understand. I completely understand and empathize. I, 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 I absolutely do. But while this case uh, is, is a fluke and it's something that happens on occasion, it does happen. This is not the only time probably, you know, this month that someone got received a whole message from D.C. 911 agency. All right. Well, now, uh, happening everywhere. Chris Bauman, he's the, uh, the head of the D.C. Police Union. He says that the call center is mismanaged, and that's why this happened. Do you have a response? No, I would totally disagree with that. After careful analysis, management is, has decided and made a decision to move to 12-hour shifts in mid-June. Um, we think that by staffing up uh, and, and having more than our minimum that we have right now as far as our call takers and dispatchers and by staffing up in mid-June, we will be better equipped to handle when we get these spikes in call volume. You have, think, think about this. If you uh, have a, a large accident, a sounds of gunshot, pedestrian accident, you can, with, with so many people having wireless phone calls now, you could have 15, 30 calls come into 911 within seconds of each other. Which, All reporting the same thing, the right. country are not prepared. They don't have uh, enough people sitting there to manage that. All right. So you are going to see where calls will continue to roll on a whole pattern when you have those spikes in call volume. And so what I'm hearing is this is going to happen again. I, I, it would it would definitely probably happen again, even when we staff up, which we will be doing in mid June when we roll the twelve hour shift. It could happen. Well, I, I, I hear happen I hear you case. say it's a fluke, but I got to tell you, I think if you live in the District of Columbia, the one thing that you want is to know that if you pick up nine one one, somebody's going to answer the phone. But our but our but what our stats show is that ninety five percent of the calls that come into the Office of Unified well, That's all good and fine if you're not of that 5%. Five seconds. They're answered within five seconds. And they, the, the national standard is right. 90% in 10 seconds. All right. Well, we're going to have to leave it. The Unified Communications is doing something right. We're answering calls within five seconds. All right. Well, we're going to so have to leave it right there. But, a, Wanda? It's an occasional. I'm sorry, yeah. we're all out of time. We've gone way over. But, Wanda, thank you so much for joining us. Wanda Gaddison, Public Information Officer of the Office of Unified Communications, thank you for being our guest this morning.